So the next type of series we want to look at is a P series. Okay. Uh, so the basic form of a P series looks like this: it's just one over some power of n, right? P is the power here. P in P series is the power of n that we see in the denominator. We can consider a basic P series where we simply have a power of n. Uh, we might see something more general like this, where we have some coefficients in there. Um, the only thing you got to be careful about here is the starting point. I've written n equals 1, but we'd have to check to make sure, you know, so a, a and b here, I mean, they, they could be any real numbers. But we'd have to check to see when, when does a n plus b, when is that equal to 0, right? We want to watch out for that, make sure it's not equal to 0. Um, if there is a 0 for this at a positive value for n, right, if there's, a, if there's an integer value of n that gives me a 0, I better start my series after that, or it's not going to be defined, right? So we won't even get to talk about convergence because there's going to be one term in the series that blows up. All right. So the main result about P series is the following theorem. Which states that a P, P series converges if P is strictly greater than 1 and it diverges otherwise. So it diverges for P less than or equal to 1. Okay, So that's simple enough. Now, um, this P-series test tells us whether or not the series converges. It doesn't say anything about what that series converges to, right? So this is strictly a test for convergence. We are not trying to calculate a value for the series. Should remind you a little bit about the P-series test for improper integrals, and in fact, that's where we get this from. We'll see in the next section that we can use the result that we have for improper integrals to establish this result for P-series. So the proof of this result is going to have to wait, but in the meantime, we can put it to use. Here are several series. We can see, do they converge or diverge? Um, this one here, this is actually an important result. This is the so-called harmonic series. Okay. And in this case, P is equal to 1, but it's not bigger than 1, so this diverges, okay? So the harmonic series is, a, is sort of a famous counterexample, right? Um, the first thing that you might kind of think when you start working with series, and you know, you're adding infinitely many terms, so you might think that as long as the terms go to 0, you should be able to add them all up. Um, but the harmonic series is, is this classic example that shows it's not enough to have the terms in your series go to zero. That's not enough for you to have a sum. You actually need those terms to go to zero fast enough or, or the thing is not going to converge, right? Um, and so we can think of this as a consequence of the P-series test that this series diverges, although there are other ways that you can do this. Um, you can prove divergence sort of directly. Um, the, the classic way that you do this is you say, okay, well, my, my sequence looks like 1 plus a half um, plus a third plus a quarter plus a fifth and, and so on. And you start sort of grouping things together and you say, okay, well, you know, these two terms they add up to something that's, that's bigger than a half. And then actually if I added the next sort of three terms, a fifth plus a sixth plus a, plus a seventh, um, those are going to add up to something that's bigger than a half and so on. I think this is the, this is the strategy that we use. Um, and, and so by sort of grouping things appropriately, we can say, well, the whole thing is, is bigger than one, you know, plus a half, plus a half, plus a half, and that's going to go to infinity if you keep adding one half forever. Interesting. This next one, well, this is p-series with p equal to 2, so this converges, right? Here, p is equal to 2, so this one uh, converges. Uh, 
This one is another famous series uh, because we actually can say what the sum is. And the sum is sort of surprising. Hope I remember this correctly. The result is something like pi squared over 6. And you might be surprised to see pi making an appearance there. Um, and there are a number of ways that you can derive this result. Uh, in different areas of mathematics, it pops up. Um, you can show it using, surprisingly enough, uh, complex numbers, complex analysis. There's one way to show it. There's other ways coming from differential equations. There's also, it's, it's a strange result. It pops up in a number of places. There, there are three or four very different proofs of the result. Um, the original result, I think, goes all the way back to Euler. Um, and so that's interesting. Uh, maybe more interesting, uh, as far as I know, if we go to 1 over n cubed, nobody actually knows what that adds up to. We know it converges, right? It's p-series with p equal to 3, p is bigger than 1, it converges. Nobody knows what it converges to. Odd. How about this one? Uh, okay, this is, well, root n is 1 half. So it is a p-series, but p is equal to 1 half, and 1 half is smaller than 1, right? 2 is bigger than 1, we should have pointed that out. Um, and so that means that this one diverges. Okay. Um, this one here is not a p-series. We actually can't comment on the convergence of this one yet. Um, when you have this minus 1 to the n, this alternating sign, right, so the, the terms in this series are going to alternate between positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative as you add them up. Um, those series have a special name. They're called alternating series, and there are special techniques for dealing with them. Um, it turns out that this alternating series does actually converge, so adding that alternating sign is enough to take this divergent harmonic series and give you a convergent alternating series. It does converge. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, we know what this converges to as well. It converges to the natural log of 2. That's weird, right? Um, actually, we're going to see once we get to talking about Taylor series, we'll see where that comes from. Okay. So it's not a P-series, but we'll see later on how to show that that one converges. Um, this one here, well, this is a P-series, right? It's a sort of this general form of a P-series with P equal to 3, which is bigger than 1. And so that means that this one converges. Um, Notice the starting value, 11, right? Um, we, can't, we can't do 10 because we get a zero in the denominator. So we've got to make sure um, that we watch out for things like zeros in the denominators, start the sum a little bit later on once you're past all the zeros, and then you can talk about convergence. The last one, well, the last one is not a P-series. The last one is geometric series. Fortunately, we've already done that, right? This is geometric. It's not a P-series, but it's geometric. with r equal to 1 half. And of course, 1 half is less than 1 in absolute value. So we know that this converges. And actually, we, we know what it converges to. We saw this in the introduction video. Um, converges to 2. Uh, 